Hi, I am Cardinal Dr. Elizabeth Samantha Rothschild Judge. I've spoken a lot about idol worship. That's been a great focus of mine for some time now. So uh, what I want to talk about now is proper sexuality versus sexual immorality. What's immoral? We hear that and we read that in the Holy Bible about sexual immorality. We read about and know about fornication, orgies and other things such as that. But then there's also proper sexuality, which is uh, the appropriate and godly way to be about things. So just take into perspective, humankind. We're animals, we're mammals, just like uh, God made all creatures, he made humans. He made all creatures with their own sexuality, that thus reproduction. So uh, for uh, consideration of reproduction, to say that all mammals, at least mammals, are sexual. We don't... Uh, lay and hatch eggs just from, you know, being reproductive. Mammals come with wounds where they carry children. And so the way to get to reproduction is sexuality, whether it's sexual immorality or it's uh, proper, all it takes is to have sex to get to reproduce. So what I want to focus on is proper sexuality versus improper sexuality, if you can understand what I'm saying. So let's take, for instance, fornication. So you got fornication and what is it? What is it? And, I, and I'm often faced with that because being a priest and a pastor, what is proper for me? being in those titles and positions, considering the fact that I'm human, that means I'm a sexual creature. So what's proper? Well, one thing is for certain, sexual immorality is not proper. So let's take into consideration fornication. Fornication leads to idolatry. Idolatry is like the worst, okay? So with fornication, it's about your status and being with whom you wanna be. So, the fact that I'm a beautiful person and I'm attractive gives me more leeway with my sexuality than would be given to others who are not as attractive as I am, who are not as pretty as I am. That is the differential. That is the differential that leads to the idol worship. So considering the man being a sexual creature, we're at a crowd. Even in consideration of me being a priest, a clergy, a call into the ministry. Okay. That I get my pick for how good I look. If I want the best out of the pickings and the best out of the pickings chooses someone lesser than me instead, that does not demean me. What that does is put whoever they picked into fornication so that I'm available for whoever the best that I pick that's available. Then putting someone in fornication is not my fault as long as I made myself available so I have no part of that. When it would come with being with, come to being with someone in a relationship or a spouse to someone, so what would lead me, someone like me, who looks good, good enough to have the best, whomever the best is, what would lead me into adultery would be whomever I would select out of the best to be either idol worshiping or leading someone into fornication. Okay. And that's just how it works. That's just like a man. Let's just talk about what's sexually proper. A man can have sex if he wants to. Of his pick, a woman that is available. Whether he is married or not, that's just the way 
sexuality works. Can we get with that? That's just the way sexuality works. Okay, so a man that can have the best, that choose less than the best, maybe he's considered his depreciative value, if there's any depreciation, because I don't do depreciation. I want the best. That's why it's so easy for me to remain absent. Celibacy is not a big deal when you're dealing with um, getting what you're worth. Sometimes it's best just to don't do it or to anoint yourself than to have something less than what you're worthy of. So sexual immorality, orgies, that's where everybody goes around having sex with anybody that's in the room. There's no discretion. And so without discretion, that means there's no selection. And without selection, that means no one's considering appraisal and what's proper. And fornication easily slips into that. And that leads to idol worship. So that's sexual immorality, just like fornication is sexual immorality. It's about getting what you're worth, being at your capacity. How can you be content in the state that you're in when you're in a state lesser than what you are? So um, for me, when it comes to proper sexuality, proper sexuality, you know, because, so, you know, some people have looked at me and they've said, OK, as pretty as she is, she just clearly doesn't have sex as much as she would be allowed to. And I'm like, the, the pickings are slim. I, I'm educated. I'm well kept. Uh, highly intelligent before my education. I'm beautiful to behold. Physically fit, if you didn't see that. So that means I deserve at least that in return. Otherwise, it isn't worth having sex because that sex would be considered sexual immorality, which is a sin. Okay? So um, for the best in the crowd that I would pick, if I hadn't decided to just be abstinent or celibate from whatever the best of the crowd is, because sometimes the best of the crowd isn't good enough for me. But if I deem it good enough and it picks something else, well, then they're leading someone else in fornication because I'm available. So I, that's why I have my sexual standards and criteria. I don't know what's going on with this video here. But that's why I have my sexual standards and criteria to determine the capacity at which I should be intimate. So with me being as pretty as I am and looking as good as I do, there's really no, and being intelligent, because that goes into it, the whole package. There's really no such thing as fornication for me. But when a man is idol worshiping, that causes the woman to fornicate. Because she's knowing that he has the opportunity to be with someone better than her. And that she's not good enough at that point. However, if he chooses someone lesser than me, then he's causing her to fornicate. Unless... He's aware that there's a man that is better and interested and available. So, I mean, it's really those technical things that people often uh, disillusion themselves about. Because some persons feel like just because they're having sex or sex was had with them, that makes them awesome and great. And that does. That is not awesome sauce. It is not awesome sauce. It's about having sex at your capacity. And there's no sin in that. So what about marriage? Someone is married. Okay, well, if someone is married and I'm better than their wife and I really, really want them enough to go after them and I'm much better than their wife, then what happens is their wife becomes the fornicator. So we have to keep up with our spiritual um, force, the influence, the force of sexuality, spiritually, with what we're doing carnal. Because like I said, it's sometimes better to just anoint yourself, whatever you got to do, than to have sex with someone that's lesser than you, 
especially if there's a better companion in the circumference or could possibly come along for as far as you can foresee. However, I don't believe in just bypassing sex. If it's time for sex and you need sex and you want sex, it's then sex is what should be God. But we want to stay away from fornication and the idol worshiping that it leads to. We want to have proper sexuality. So if you know you're not good enough for someone, don't come on to them and say something crass about wanting to get with them. That's not proper. That is in itself sinful. And you could condemn yourself to eternal damnation propositioning the wrong person. Okay? And, um, well, if it's a proper person and they're not sexual, then you have to respect where they're consecrated to God. However, with all things being equal, everybody doing their thing, wild monkey dance. Everything is all good to do it. Well, then, hey, get down to the bug naked square. So anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about today. You all be blessed.